This is Pro Wrestling Melee, the proving ground for wrestling fans. Here is your host, A.C. Savage. Hi there, and welcome to the inaugural Melee right here on Pro Wrestling Melee. We're going to debate some amazing topics. We're going to ask amazing trivia questions, all to figure out which one of these two competitors knows more and can prove it when it comes to professional wrestling. I'm your host and show creator, AC Savage, and with me today are two of the finest people I know. Aside from the fact that they're both members of Team Valor, I have with me Ignacio from Parts Unknown, and we have Straight from Yonkers, the Irish exit. Welcome. Uh, this is an exciting time. For those of you who haven't checked it out, we have another video on this YouTube channel that's going to go into full detail of the rules. But here is the quick breakdown. We have five debate questions. These two combatants will go head to head on them. I will award points based on their intensity, integrity, and intelligence. Why? Because we love Kurt Angle on this program. Full disclaimer, Kurt Angle's not associated with Pro Wrestling Melee, but hope so. One day, Kurt, we love you. But they can both earn points, but the round winner, round by round, who wins their debate, will gain a bonus of three points. Once we're done with the debate, we're going to move into trivia, where whoever has the score, who's uh, in the lead, will get first pick of whatever trivia category they want. And you must answer every question in the trivia category. Multiple choice is allowed, but at that point, your point values are halved. And by the end of the trivia round, if we have not had a clear-cut winner, we will move to a sudden death question. One question to end the match. Let's get straight into the melee. All right, gentlemen, the WWE Draft aired Tuesday night on SmackDown Live, and the WWE landscape has changed yet again. Raw and SmackDown now have unique talent rosters, so I'd like to know which of the brands, Raw or SmackDown Live, do you think has the best overall roster following the draft? We're going to start with the Irish exit. Thank you very much, AC. I'd like to start off uh, answering this question by just jumping right into it. I think SmackDown is the clear-cut winner after this after this uh, draft. I don't even think it should even be brought into question. I, I think this is uh, sort of a silly thing to debate, to be honest. Uh, SmackDown has a much more balanced roster. I mean, just look at the, the way the Royal roster was drafted. I mean, you have Chris Jericho going in the early rounds. It, how is that even possible? <laughs> hey, hey, he still is the Ayatollah. We have Brock Lesnar, who's gonna, not even going to be full-time. That's a good point. Uh, I mean... Crazy, but then you look at the SmackDown roster, and I mean, I'm just going to pull up my notes. Yeah, go ahead, feel free. Uh, like I said, I mean, just look at the SmackDown roster, top to bottom. It is drafted your your key players, the guys you're going to present to the public, your top notch. Then they go mid rounds, they get their mid guys, they get their good heels, they have their good young faces. You go to the raw side, and they're just all over the map. Can't get any consistency. They're not going to have uh, anything. I don't think. Okay. Call Smackdown. That's a good starting salvo. Ignacio, you're a rebuttal. You can never be so wrong, bro. <laughs> First of all, when you talk about balanced roster, Raw actually has the better tag team division, the better women's division, yeah, that's a good point. the better cruiserweight division. And in fact, they, they're even talks about bringing in the cruiserweight title, which is very exciting. Um... I would agree with you that SmackDown has a lot of uh, uh, new faces, a lot of really good new faces like AJ Styles, which is who, in my opinion, is probably one of the best, if not the best, in-ring performer uh, and the best wrestler going on today. However, Raw has Finn Balor, which is very mysterious. You don't know how the writing is going to, going to play out or the storylines are going to play out, but Finn Balor, in my opinion, is just as good as a ring-ring performer as AJ Styles. Bold statement. 
it would be interesting to see how his personality is going to be now in the big time, how he's going to cut his promos. But hey, the demon, you don't even have to cut promos. You go in, you do your work, and you get the job done. And let's not forget the women's wrestling, which is probably the hottest wrestling today. You mean hottest in terms of actual in-ring work? Of actual work. in-ring work okay. and promos and, and, and competition. All the Sasha women. Banks, Lovely. boss... You can't do. Who does SmackDown have to compete with it? A couple of geriatrics, Randy Orton, Alberto Del Rio, wow. and Tina, who are also part time. All right, let me stop you right. Wow, what a what an offense! Your rebuttal, Irish exit. Great answer. Great answer. We'll give you <laughs> very intense. Let me give you that. I mean, you want to bring in the women's division. SmackDown has Becky Styles leading off. I mean, that. How, how can you ever argue with the that? Back to the last kicker, Becky Lynch. Still yet to be proved. Daniel Bryan did say Becky Lynch he thought was the most talented girl. And I'm going to agree. That's where. So there's women's division. Tag team, I'll give you. I think the Raw Raw side. There's no arguing with that. They're, they, I think they have that hands down. But you want to talk about Finn Balor and your hopes that he's going to be. Their face, Ooh. their hopes that he's going to cut the best promos, the hopes that he's going to be as up as AJ Styles. You hope. Hope is hard. Hope is hard when you're lynching it on an entire side. Ooh. I don't know. That's, that's a good You're really going to lynch all of Raw on the hope of Finn Balor? Can Balor be the linchpin of Raw? Your final rebuttal. Well, even if Finn Balor doesn't rise to the expectations that, that you don't get, we still have, in my opinion, uh, uh, Seth Rollins. Who, Man, I was waiting for you to bring that up. He is the premier guy, and if you look at the past couple of years in WWE, we're not talking about outside WWE, before AJ Styles came in, this guy, as JR said, comes from this the, the same tree as Shawn Michaels. Is, he can sell. He can he can work oh, strong yeah. style. He can he can wrestle with anybody. You can put anybody in that ring. He'll get them over. Just makes it for a better brand. Okay. I've heard both your arguments, and let me say, wow, great opening round. Um, Irish Exit, you focus on balance of the brand. You focus on Becky Lynch actually being called by her own GM the best women wrestler, woman wrestler today. And your own opponent called your number two pick on SmackDown, AJ Styles, the best wrestler going today. So you had that working for you. That's why I'm awarding you two points in this round. But you got to give the devil his due. And Ignacio brought straight fire. He talked about Finn Balor and the excitement, the buzz. The fact that Finn Balor was a first-round pick shows that he's going to be a key player on Raw. And I was waiting for it. Once you praised the AJ Styles, I'm like, you know what? You're canning in the argument. But you finally did it. You timed it perfectly. You hit me with Seth Rollins, the architect, the man, the number one draft pick, a guy that we can all agree. Last year, when he was the champion, the fans didn't appreciate him as much. He, he goes missing due to injury, and we're clamoring for Seth Rollins. I'm going to award four points to Ignacio. You take the round. You're now up seven to two. I know Irish exit. You're not pleased. I'm debating so hard right now. <laughs> so hard. That you are. That you are. All right, moving straight in. We're going to continue with the WWE draft. We saw both brands pick up amazing talents. Picks that made sense. Others that I know a lot of us were thought were head scratchers. Of all the draft picks made, this is a two-part question. Which superstar drafted on the televised show, so out of the top 30 picks, will be the most important slash impactful talent for their brand? And also tell me which superstar will be the least relevant. This time we're going to start with Ignacio. And you're not restricted to one brand. You can say most impactful for one show, least impactful for the other. 
It's, I'm going to start with the least impactful, and I thought okay. this was very surprising to me on how Baron Corbin was picked. <sighs> so that was a hugely controversial pick. I, to be honest, I think I'm, I'm not saying that he's not ready for the big time. I just thought he was brought up too quickly, or just brought up the wrong way. I was too too much of a big fan of the the writing, the the the. Uh, just the storyline behind it. He didn't really have any rivalries. There weren't any promos. There weren't any vignettes. Back in the day, in the in the Attitude Era, you had vignettes. You had shows to 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 to, to promote. You don't even have to go in and, and, and wrestle all that much, but and still get the excitement around from the audience, from those who are watching at home. They need to bring that back in wrestling, in my opinion. And Baron Corbin, if he had the opportunity to to promote himself, do some. Promos before getting into the in ring, maybe it would have you know. Then I would see him as a, as a much better pick and, and one deserving of uh, that top pick that he got. In terms of the most impactful, um, I'm going to go with uh, that's a that's a that's a tough one. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with Alberto Del Rio. Wow. All right. I like Alberto Del Rio. He's getting a lot of pop. Uh, he's over. You know what I mean? He, he has the in-ring experience. Um, and I think you could put him up in any way, whether it's the low end of the, the roster, the high end of the roster, he's going to come up with, with good matches, good promos. In my opinion, probably you know one of the better pro, promo guys that they have that can actually speak and, and get heat as well as at the same time you know, get the fans behind him. That's that's a great opening point. Irish exit, your counter. All right, so I'll go opposite. I'm going to go most relevant to least relevant. I think uh, most relevant, I mentioned during uh, the opening round, was uh, Becky Lynch. Yes. I think, like like you had mentioned, Rowan GM coming out, praising her as uh, the best, wo- best woman wrestler in the sport. I don't think you're going to argue against that. I think she's going to really rise to the challenge, really prove herself and just distance herself from every other woman out there. I don't. That, that's a good point. The female talent on SmackDown's a little thin, so I, I think she's going to come out hot. Um, least impactful. Uh, again, mentioned in the last round, I got to go Chris Jericho. It's really I got to harp on it. I, you're putting too much eff, too much emphasis uh, drafting a guy early on a guy that isn't even going to be around most of the time. That's a great it's, point. Part time argument. You, you got drafted what in the, the sixth round? Uh, in the middle yeah, rounds, like easy. third or four, yeah. one of those. You're going to draft a, a, a mid-round pick you could have given on a, a guy that you're trying to bring up from the mid-level, put him towards your top, and uh, you wasted sure. a pick on him, in my opinion. Okay, your counter? Yeah, I disagree. I don't, I don't like all the heat you're giving Chris Jericho. <laughs> Chris Jericho, <laughs> you know, he... We all love our vendettas. The thing is, you need the veteran presence in, in, in wrestling to bring other guys over. Um, yes, he he he, might, he does look slow, but man, that that code breaker, that finish, you could put that finish. He could he could do it out of nowhere and make it exciting. Let's hope it doesn't fall apart afterwards. <laughs> he does DDP yoga, so he can't. Do that. Oh, that's a quick plug. I do DDP yoga. It's changed my life. DDP, we love you. Again, DDP is not affiliated with this program, but yeah, Chris Jericho is still. You know, I think he's still got it. And at the same time, you don't need for him to be a main event player. You, you know, he's, he's, he's past that. But at the same time, you do need someone to bring all of the, the mid-card guys. Guys like a, a Baron Corbin, which I know, they're both on right? No, like, Corbin's a SmackDown. Corbin's SmackDown, okay. So so you you need that, that guy to, to bring the young guys out who can't really talk much. You need the guys that, that to, to get them over, have some entertainment around their, their storylines, Create a story, and Chris Jericho does a great job doing that. Okay, your final point? Chris Jericho could have directed four rounds later and done the exact same thing. <laughs> okay, you want to leave it off there? All right. I just wow. don't get it. Wow, wow, um, wow. Ignacio, part of where your argument fell apart for me was the fact that you didn't know Baron Corbin's not actually on Raw. You made an excellent reason, and... Forgot about that. You and I are in perfect agreement. Baron Corbin being drafted as early as he was 
Um, I know that maybe they're trying to make us buy into the fact, well, hey, this new young guy is a big-time player, but I think for where he was taken, that's the perfect spot to take a guy like Kevin Owens or a Cesaro that is a proven quantity. Uh, qu- yeah, qu- <laughs> that is a proven quantity. Uh, the man, both of those guys, I think, would have been better picks over Corbin. I like how you stay to your guns and you really attack Jericho part-timer. Uh, <laughs> it's a little unfair to attack his age because the man has, like Ignacio said, has been doing it at a high level. To that round, I'm going to award Mr. Irish Exit three points. I'm going to award Ignacio four points. I'm sorry. The man brought straight fire. He brought me facts. Even though I didn't like he didn't know the whole Baron Corbin. So instead of awarding you three bonus, I'm going to give you one bonus for not knowing Baron Corbin was drafted over to the blue brand. (laughs) That's fine. So Ignacio will receive, I gave you four and two. That's six for this round. Irish exit, you received three. So our score right now, Sweatin' bro? <laughs> Ignacio is coming on strong with 13. I don't sweat, I just Irish did. exit <laughs> has five. So you're down by eight points. It's not the end of the world. You can quickly make those points up. There's plenty of ground. Also, and I just want to add here, there are two built-in game mechanics to always keep this show competitive. If at any point you fall behind more than 10 points, you can activate Reckless Abandon, which will give you a Final Jeopardy-style question where you can wager your points to try to catch up. Just know if you get that question wrong, you'll lose the points. That's why it's a wager. The same token, Ignacio, since you're in the lead, you actually, since you're up by 8, can activate the No Mercy mechanic. When a player is up by seven or more points, you can either steal your opponent's answer for one debate round and change their answer, or you can steal one of their trivia questions. But you must be up by seven or more points when you activate that ability. And that's vice versa. If you take the lead, you can activate that ability. It's only good one time per game. All right, so moving on to our third debate question. Uh, a lot was said this past week, especially by the general managers. Raw general manager Mick Foley mentioned that today's new era, and this was on Monday Night Raw, that today's new era reminded him of the excitement and unpredictability associated with the Attitude Era and the Monday Night Wars, which he was a key player in. Now, Who do you believe, since he wanted to take that stroll down memory lane, was the greatest wrestler from the Monday Night Wars slash Attitude Era? You are not restricted to a WWE-only answer. So that kind of opens the books, Mr. NWO over there, if you want to take a page out of WCW. But I'm going to start with Irish Exit. Who do you believe was the greatest late 90s performer? I mean, late 90s performer. I, I got to go with the king himself, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Strong answer. I mean, we got him sitting right here. He's stunning macho man right there, yeah. I mean, yeah. How, can you, how can you argue against him? We're talking, you want to go late 90s, we're talking 15, 16 years later. You walk in, you walk up to 10 out of 10 self-respecting men on the street, and you ask them what the Stone Cold Stunner is, you're ended up on the floor. <laughs> That's a, the man is an icon that defines an era. That is true. Multiple time world champion, intercontinental world champion, yep. tag team champion. I mean, his record speaks for itself. There's, right. there's no need to, to praise his accolades that you can go look him up yourself if you don't know him, but you should. That is true. For our younger viewers, if you don't know who Stone Cold Steve Austin is, this show may be too advanced for you. And this is a man that defined his era, the attitude era. This is a guy that'll take you off the top of a ladder, put you through a table, chug a beer and smash it off your face and then piss on you afterwards. <laughs> this guy was ruthless and defined the Attitude Era. That was an excellent opener. Ignacio. 
good answer. <laughs> um, you know, there were so many good wrestlers in the Attitude Era, so many good storylines in the Attitude Era, uh, from both sides, uh, WCW and WWE. But, so the question is, who's the greatest Who wrestler? do you believe is the greatest wrestler from the Monday Night Wars slash Attitude Era? I would have to go with Vince McMahon. <laughs> what? What a shot! I not have Stone Cold without Vince McMahon, but at the you same time, the table. you yes. could have Vince McMahon with Undertaker. You could have Vince McMahon with Bret Hart. You could have Vince McMahon with Shawn Michaels. You could have Vince McMahon with DX. You could have Vince McMahon with anyone. He doesn't have to wrestle or, or, or be that great of a wrestler. You have to be an entertainer as well. That's a big part of wrestling. And Vince McMahon, he, he, he pretty much made the attitude. And if it wasn't for Vince McMahon being so aggressive allow and, and lenient with, with, with the way entertainment was shown at back in the day. That is true. WCW, you know, that's why he eventually took over WCW. Okay. Your rebuttal, Irish eggs. And I, I got to admit, I'm a little stunned. I need a second just to... It's like he hit you with the stunner, right? Uh, you got to vote for Donald Trump, right? <laughs> oh! Oh, I, 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 <laughs> what? I need a moment here. Oh, jeez. No what rebuttal? What the hell? Is wrong with you, boy? Vince McMahon. And, oh yeah. And I don't. You should have just conceded. It's Stone Cold. That's not even an argument. You can have. You, you can can't have, have Stone Cold. You can't have Vince. Stone Cold on Vince McMahon. This man had more matchups against more big name people than anybody else. You name another person that could step in a Stone Cold shoe. But his you biggest Vince matchup. Vince McMahon is an entertainer. Vince McMahon is an entertainer. Stone Cold's not. Come on. You know, where, where are you coming from? I will give you. You're at the end of your argument. After you blew a bunch of smoke up our asses, <laughs> talking because you can because I picked the answer you wanted. <laughs> you did without Vince McMahon. WCW is still going to be its own entity in WWF before the Nancys took it back over. Wouldn't have been as big as it is now, but it, if it's not Stone Cold Steve Austin that defines the Attitude Era, it's not the best at that time, and it's no one. Wow, disagree. I disagree. You can't have Stone Cold without Vince McMahon. At the same time, Vince McMahon had some of the most, had many memorable match, matches. You had Vince McMahon versus Hulk Hogan. You had Vince McMahon versus Undertaker. You had Vince McMahon and The Rock. John Vince Vince McMahon is in every oh, single major. Or is it the definition of a wrestler? Okay, I, I think I've heard all that I need to hear. While I will give Ignacio credit for the most outside-the-box thinking, I'm thinking he's going to say uh, Hollywood Hogan. I'm thinking he might even say The Rock or Triple H. No, he goes and pulls one of the biggest... Actually, when you think about it, one of the biggest heels in professional wrestling. Excellent argument. But at the end of the day, you know it, he knows it, I know it. The few audience members we have here know you cannot beat the stunner. The reason being, you said two things. One, you gave him credit for his argument, but also you said something that I didn't wholeheartedly agree with. You said Vince McMahon created Stone Cold. Stone Cold Steve Austin's character existed before he went head to head with McMahon. Because Austin 316 was born before that promo, before he had ever won the world championship. So while, yes, from a creative standpoint, Vince is the boss and he has a lot of say, I like to believe, and, and this is also coming from the man's mouth himself, that he had enough creative leeway to build himself into somebody that mattered. So, Ignacio, huge round for you. I'm actually going to award you five points on that round. That said, 
Not only is this man taking seven points, he gets the bonus three. So in this round, you're five, and he takes ten whole points at the end of that round. So you're, ma you're mounting that comeback, Irish Exit. You are mounting that comeback at this point. The scoreboard reads, Ignacio with 18, Irish Exit with 15. You picked up some much-needed ground. Now we're going to move to two rapid-fire um, debate questions. These questions are only worth three points each. You will only get a few seconds to mount your argument with no rebuttal. Now, how it works, I will pose the question. Call out the answer choice you prefer. Whoever I hear first will get to answer first. You'll get a few seconds to formulate your answer, and then I'll uh, give you your time to speak, and then I'll cut you off when it's appropriate. Okay. WWE Battleground airs this Sunday only on the WWE Network. Uh, we were not paid for that. I just wanted to plug that. And the main event is the long-anticipated triple threat match for the WWE Championship before uh, between former Shield members Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns. Three men, three different athletic styles, and three different in-ring tactics. These men are in the prime of their careers and hopefully can stay healthy and capitalize on their career opportunities. Which of these three men will be considered the greatest wrestler out of the three once their careers have ended? Dean Ambrose. Seth Rollins. Okay, we have Irish Exit with Dean Ambrose, and we have Seth Rollins with Ignacio. Irish Exit, you went first. Take a few seconds to formulate why, and then we'll go off of that. And obviously, Ignacio, you have your time to think about the architect. Let me know when you're ready. Good to go? All right. Take it away. Well, I'm glad neither of us picked Roman Reigns. <laughs> I mean, no, let's just be honest. Thank God. <laughs> there might be some sociopath out there picking him. <laughs> but, I mean, between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, I mean, you're really splitting hairs about who you think is going to be the bigger face and at the end of their day. I mean, you're talking about two guys a few years ago when they were on their, their come up that were both leading men to do it, and they're both coming to their, the precipice of that now. Uh, I just, it's more of a gut feeling, I'm not going to lie to you, not really too much of an okay. argument against this. You, Seth Rollins is going to be, he's going to tell you, he's going to be the one with the accolades. He's going to be the guy that, you know, that was the champ a couple of years ago that missed some time and people were okay. clamoring for him, like you mentioned. But Time, but excellent point, Ignacio. Seth Rollins, mainly because he's a better ring performer, hands down. Um, he can sell, and when you can sell, you can ask any wrestler, you're going to make it big. Uh, and he has the look, he has the it factor. Dean Ambrose is a good choice, but he just doesn't have the it factor. When you, don't, when you look at him, he doesn't, look, he doesn't look like a champion. He just has to prove himself. But Seth Rollins, he has, he has the look. He will be. He will have a better wrestling career. Oh, he's looking at you pretty angry right now. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who can't see, the back of the packaging on the Finn Balor box does show Dean Ambrose. And he looks pissed, right? Now, and folks. Dean does look pissed. All right. Uh, I like both your arguments. I really wish both of you had taken some different liberties with the arguments. With you, I wish that when you're talking about Dean Ambrose, you're talking about a guy that. Maybe you can argue never actually needed to ever be a world champion. He's good enough to be that kind of new age hardcore icon, that new age underdog that you just want to root for him because he's been screwed over so many times. Whereas your argument, you're arguing for the guy who's the complete opposite. You're arguing for a man whose moveset alone is an argument within itself. Seth Rollins, there's nothing in the ring he can't do. Um, but you didn't give me that. You did give me an excellent point that he's a good in-ring performer. And because you talked about the fact that that's 
what a lot of wrestlers, that's the guy they like to work with. A good in-ring performer because it elevates everyone else. That reason alone, you will get this uh, rapid fire round three pointer. So the score is now, if I'm not mistaken, 21 to 10. So you're out of range. I'm 21 15. Thank you for remembering your own score. Can't even remember your own name, but you remember your score. I like ah. that. <laughs> what? So 21 15. All right, are you ready for this next one? Yep. We're going to take it back. Our final debate question. Rapid fire. The first WWE draft in 2002 saw The Rock be drafted number one overall to SmackDown. Now, Stone Cold was declared a free agent prior to the draft and therefore not draft eligible. My question to you, who would you draft back then with a number one pick if possible? The Rock or Stone Cold? Stone Cold. Okay. Ignacio called Stone Cold. Irish Exit, you will be debating for The Rock. Take a few seconds to formulate your answer. When you're ready, just go straight into it. But don't take too long because ain't nobody got time for that. Can you just, just spew it out? Spew it out. Stone Cold Steve Austin, hands down, mainly because of his in-ring work as a, as a snug performer, his, his excellent finisher, which is the Stone Cold Stunner, his ability to, to get heat, but at the same time, uh, get the fans behind him. It was interesting. When he was a heel, fans were still cheering him. People paid to watch Stone Cold stun everybody. And after every, at the end of, of almost every show, Stone Cold was stunning someone, and that would be it. <laughs> so therefore, All right. I have to go I've heard enough. Great, great answer. You're a bottle. All right. I mean, The Rock, people's champ. Can't argue with that. I mean, iconic, iconic moves. You want to talk Stone Cold Stunner? I mean, The Rock Bottom's right there. They're one and one a. We're good point. We're fighting left and right here for no reason. The Rock. I mean, and The Rock Stone Cold. Besides the Vince McMahon Stone Cold. Uh, Face off, The Rock, Stone Cold is, is, is up there, right there with it. Again, one and one at. You know, if you're, I think either man, you're picking the right one, but uh, I'd go The Rock too. A little, little younger guy, you can maybe get some more merchandising out of, in my opinion. Okay. All right, is that where you want to leave your argument? Yeah. I like how you threw in the merchandising. I thought that was really solid right there. You threw in the age factor. You could get more mileage out of the rock. That said, Ignacio just again came with straight fire. How many just live cable programming uh, out of WWE Raw and SmackDown did end with Austin delivering the stunner? Um, that reason alone, Ignacio again takes the point. He now goes up 24 to 15. Hey, there's plenty of points to be had, uh, but now you are eligible to activate No Mercy, but you're restricted in that so long as you're in the lead, you can steal one of his trivia questions. So let's move into trivia. We have four topics. You will select, starting with Ignacio, since he's in the lead, you will select your topic. You will then answer every question in that topic. If you do not know the answer, you may elect for a multiple choice. Three questions, one worth two, one worth four, one worth six. If you elect for multiple choice, the point values are halved, so obviously one, two, three, respectively. From the options you are offered, you may select. Category one, Austin 316. Category two, name that theme song. Category three, Who's your daddy? And category four, the faces of Foley. Your selection. Faces of Foley. Going with the faces of Foley. Your two-point question. This face of Foley was thrown off of the hell in the cell by the Undertaker. Mankind. Mankind. That is correct. Two points. Your four-point question. This face of Foley was retired by Triple H. 
Cactus Jack. Cactus Jack is correct. Your six pointer. This face of Foley lost an I Quit match to Ric Flair at SummerSlam 2006. Crap. Mick Foley? Mick Foley is correct! You make a clean sweep! Go. I thought I was gonna get you there. Mick Foley is not even considered a face of Mick Foley, but you got it. Clean sweep, 12 points, give it to the man. Ignacio now roaring out to a 36 point score. The master debater. <laughs> the master debater indeed. All right, this is where the crunch time hits. Irish exit. You have three categories remaining. Austin 316, name that theme song, and who's your daddy? What do you want to go with? Give me uh, Austin 316. Going with Austin 316. I'm reminding you of the multiple choice option if you start to, you know, worry a bit. Your two-point question. How many times has Stone Cold Steve Austin won the Royal Rumble? Four. Oof. Very close. It was three times. Austin has won the Royal Rumble on three occasions, which is the Royal Rumble record. For the love of God, please, I hope that record never gets broken. Austin needs to have a record. Your four-point question. At what pay-per-view in 1996 did Steve Austin deliver the Austin 316 promo? Reminding you, there is the multiple choice. Let's do Go a multiple choice. Is Was it at A, SummerSlam, B, the King of the Ring, C, In Your House, or D, Wrestlemania? Uh, B, King of the Ring. B, King of the Ring is correct, and the Irish exit comes back with two points, since he used multiple choice. Your six-point question. What was Steve Austin's nickname when he started in the WWF? Ooh... We're going to have to go multiple choice on this one. Okay, <laughs> multiple choice. Was it A, Hawk? Was it B, Crush? Was it C, The Assassin? Or was it D, The Ringmaster? We go A. It was not Hawk. The answer was The Ringmaster. That's a little... Uh, <laughs> that's a little gem from his early days. Okay, so you only took two points out of that category. That, that ultimately is leaving... You knew the ringmaster answer, didn't you? You, Why you didn't activate the no mercy ability that you have right now since you're in the lead. Can I roll it over to the next game? Uh, well, we have, two, we have two more trivia categories left. You may not use it for a future matchup. Okay. Then that gives you two in one game. Okay. Ignacio, you have two categories to choose from. Name that theme song, Who's Your Daddy? Who's Your Daddy? Going with Who's Your Daddy? It's a topic on famous wrestling fathers. I'm going to give you the father's name. Tell me who their child is. Along with Tony Atlas for your two-point question, Rocky Johnson won the World Tag Team Championships and achieved the feat of becoming the first African-American superstar, along with Tony Atlas, to do so. He's the daddy of who? Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Dwayne, The Rock, Johnson, give the man two points. He's just padding that lead with brutality. All right. Moving to your four-point question. Jim the Anvil Neidhart, part of the legendary Hart Foundation, is the father of who? Natalia. Natalia. Give the man four points. Wow, could he make it a clean sweep? We don't know. Here's your six-pointer. Erwin R. Scheister wrestled in the early 90s 
even the mid-90s, as part of the Million Dollar Team. He won Tag Team Goal with Ted DiBiase. Erwin R. Scheisser is the father of who? Of which WWE superstar? I'm going to need an answer in uh, five multiple seconds. Choice. Multiple choice. The answer we're looking for, is it A, Titus O'Neil? Is it B, Bray Wyatt? Is it C, Neville? Or is it D, Seth Rollins? Bray Wyatt. It is indeed Bray Wyatt. Give the man three points. You cleaned up well in that round. You still brought in, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you still brought in nine total points. That brings your trivia round to a total of 21 points. Well done. Uh, going off of what you did at the end of the debate round, your final score as it stands is 45. Whew. Debating so hard. Do not forget you still have your Reckless Abandon mechanic. You can activate that at the end of this round if you want to risk it all. Okay. Your final category is Name That Theme Song. I am going to do my best attempt at singing said theme song. You must give me the wrestler associated with the song. So for two points... This superstar song goes, I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I got the looks Could be gonna speak that, that drives the girl wild. Well, you know, any more singing out of that song would probably get sued. <laughs> so, which superstar? Probably gonna have to go multiple choice. Multiple yeah. choice. No mercy. Oh. You want to steal his two-pointer. All right. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels! Give the man two points. He, he pads his lead to 47. So, bru so brutal. I was not expecting him. You just looked at low-hanging fruit and you were like, yep, I'm taking it. Oh, jeez. Your four-pointer. For Irish exit, you no longer have the No Mercy mechanic. Whether fighting or spitting, my discipline is unforgiven. Don't you have to multiple choice. Multiple that. choice. Is the, really my forte. <laughs> is, is the answer A. I just like hearing you sing. <laughs> is it A. John Cena? B. Batista? C. Your favorite Chris Jericho? Or D. Randy Orton? Run those back to me one more time. A, John Cena, B, Batista, C, Chris Jericho, D, Randy Orton. No, B. Batista? Yeah. I am sorry, that is incorrect. The answer is A, John Cena from his Doctor of Thugonomics days. Word life to all you out there. All right. This is your six point. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is your six point question. As it stands now, you only took two points home from the earlier trivia mm -hmm. round. You're at seventeen. If you get this six pointer, that brings you up to twenty three. He's at forty seven. So even if you were to wager it all. By stealing your two-pointer, he actually guaranteed his victory. But this is now a matter of pride and respectability. This is about going down like a man. <laughs> okay. For six points, if you don't get it, I'm going to have to call it as one of the most brutal beatdowns <laughs> to start off a game show ever. Which... Superstars, does this song belong to? You look so good to me. <laughs> God. 
Uh, the things you do to game show on the planet. The things you do to get famous in this world, right? <laughs> you have to go multiple choices. Multiple the place, choice. Is that what is set for the category? Does this song belong to A. The Wyatt family? B. Coco Beware. C. John Cena. Or D. Billy and Chuck. It'll be. <sighs> you chose B, Coco Beware. Yep. The answer was it's like D, D. I like picking Billy a and Chuck. And at that point, we have to call it the winner of the inaugural melee at a score of 47 to 17. Ignacio! I do, I have to just debate hard. The score was so close at the end of the debate. It's the trivia round that always gets the best of us. I don't even know where I am. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to my first two competitors. I will always refer to this as one of the greatest melees ever. You always remember your first. Anyone out there, if Someone you think be beer. <laughs> there will be beer. If you think you know more than anyone else, come to the Proving Grounds. For Ignacio, for Irish Exit, I'm AC Savage. We look forward to bringing you many more episodes. Have a great weekend. Take care. Thanks for watching. Hey, this is AC Savage. Just wanted to thank you for taking out the time to check us out. You can find us at all of our social media pages listed above. We can't wait to see you at the next Melee. Take care.